welcome back to the sixth gear garage. Today, I'm gonna start parting out this truck. So you may have seen my 1987 Toyota 4x4 in some previous videos, and I'll be honest, this truck does look good from 10, 20, 30 feet away. Uh, but up close, you can tell that this cab has seen better days. It is all rusty along the bottom edge here. And they got holes in the corners, the doors are junk, they're all bubbling up as well. And while the frame isn't broken yet, uh, it was previously broken and patched, not the way that I would have done it because when you do this, it continues to rot and deteriorate on the inside and eventually, whatever they patched over is going to work its way up through here and need patched again. But by that point, the frame is probably going to be junk. So, the frame isn't destroyed yet, but there's enough life in it to use it for another project. And that project is going to be a feature in a future video that I'm going to do with Mikey from the Shop Spot. And it's going to be weird, so stay tuned. There's going to be uh, a few different automotive manufacturers combined into one really weird four-wheel drive vehicle. But before we do any of that, I got to get this cab off. So I'm going to start by getting this interior stripped down and going from there. Now I've made previous videos of how to remove things like rear glass, uh, the trim, uh, take apart the doors, take apart the dash, the door trim, steering wheel, all that stuff. So you can go back and see that in my previous videos, I'll put links down below. I'm going to set up the time lapse, go to town and see how fast I can get this one apart. We're gonna pause here and I'll, I'll show you what's happening so far. Here's everything that I've removed. I've come across an unfortunate sign. As you saw, when I was taking out the uh, inclinometer, it was hardwired in. That was the first bad sign that I saw. And these wires, they go down here and they must have tapped into them right here behind a cigarette lighter. Here, I'll show you what makes me uh, unhappy here is seeing these things. I mean, they work, they're, uh, I think they're called scotch connectors and you tap into an existing wire and run a new one off. Why this has been cut, I don't know. But this just means that somebody's modified the wiring, which is never good. And I see a bunch of butt connectors. There's like 10 or so more butt connectors up here. This is an inline capacitor, not capacitor, uh, filter for these uh, Rocker Fosgate four inches. So this is a certain frequency that it cuts off so none of the lows get to the speakers and blow them. So I'm all right with that. Oh no, there's even one behind the cluster. That's not what I like to see. There's some added wires here. Oh, they've even got like, I don't even know. We're, I don't even know, I don't know what they did. <laughs>
interior is most of the way stripped. I've got to go in and take all the HVAC duct work and the heater core and blower motor out yet. But uh, I'm going to do all that when I take out the steering wheel and the steering column. Because right now, I want to keep this drivable so I can move it back outside so I can get my garage back. But as you can see, this thing is completely gutted out. Um, surprisingly, the passenger side floor is really nice. The only rust I see is right there around this, this drain hole right here. Up there looks really good, along the edge looks really good. And that's kind of rare for an Ohio truck. Uh, these doors, they aren't original. And part of the reason all that wiring was, uh, we'll call it customized over there, uh, these wires go over here and they actually go to the door. Um, something else weird I found, I found this. Looks like a radio plug. And it no idea why it's going back here like that. Runs along up here and turns around and goes into the radio plug. And that has like a split harness that goes into the factory radio plug. The only thing that doesn't make any sense is the factory plug is the same as the one that, that comes off of this jumper harness. So maybe it's just an extension to get some length. I don't know, but that's that. We'll take a look at the driver's side now. It's a little bit rusty, rusty, rusty. Pretty bad. Yeah, real bad. You can see it's actually been patched before. This is the original floor right here, and this is the new sheet metal. So I'm sure it's real nasty under that sound deadening there. You can see it's all the way back to right there. It's nice and crispy. Uh, back here, we've got some duct tape. What is this? Silicone with some screw heads in it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So many questions for the previous owner. Why is there screws siliconed into the floor? Don't know. Good news, there's like at least a dollar and change back here. There's my button. As I was tearing this all apart, I really got to wondering the history of this truck. It must have had non-power doors at one point. Those were added. It had the tachometer. It had the uh, inclinometer on it. It had, it had a defrost button. And it was actually plugged in, which is weird because only a forerunner would have that. Um, it's got the original, just the Toyota badge, which was on the lower end. It doesn't have SR5, it doesn't even have 4x4, but it's a 4x4 truck. I think this truck is a complete uh, mutt. Frankenstein of other trucks that this guy must have put together. Um, he did a pretty decent job, I'll give him that. The interior was very, very well done. And it had a deck lamp button too, which is weird because this truck didn't have a rear light over the bed. As far as saving this cab, uh, would it be worth it? Well, probably not. Um, this has gotten pretty bad to the point where if you did do the work to patch this up, you're still going to have rot on the inside, and that's just going to come back to haunt you. You know, once these trucks get to this point, there really is no saving it when there are so many more nice cabs available down south. You know, Ohio is great for preserving the interiors, and of course, these trucks mechanically will go forever. But sheet metal, Ohio is just not kind to sheet metal. This whole seam here is all rotted away. All this. And this is the cab mount, too. Yeah. Here's the bolt for the cab mount. So this is all weakened. That's probably why it's cracked so much. I bet that's starting to push up through the cab. And the rust is even starting to make its way into the A-pillars on this one. Here's the carpet from the cab. Surprisingly, there is not a hold worn on the driver's side. The rest of the carpet's pretty nasty though, but I may try and power wash this and see if I can salvage it. What do we got here? I'll check that out. An old good guy's ticket. It's scary in there? Yeah. You sure you don't want to go for a ride in there? No? That's scary. It's scary? Do you like this truck? No. No? Do you like Daddy's other truck better? Ah. Yeah. Well, we'll be riding in that one soon once the weather turns. 